Hi guys, welcome to the Opinionated Reefer. Today we're going to talk about this stuff, Kalkwasa, and why this cheap and effective supplement isn't more popular among reef hobbyists. To cut a long story short, it's a real faff to get set up. So what is Kalkwasser? Kalkwasser is a German word for calcium hydroxide or lime water and what it actually does is supplement both calcium and alkalinity in a balanced manner. So what actually happens is as the Kalkwasser is dripped slowly into your aquarium it captures the free carbon dioxide in your water and converts it into bicarbonate which in turn creates alkalinity. Now you might have heard that a common use for kalkwasser in marine aquariums is to increase the pH. Now this happens as a side effect of capturing the carbon dioxide and converting it into alkalinity. The less CO2 in your water the higher your pH tends to be. And as we all know, a high pH in a reef aquarium is highly beneficial. Kalkwasser can often be quite confusing for newer reefers, but you can think of it as an all-in-one calcium and alkalinity supplement that also has the added benefit of increasing pH. So what are some of the benefits of Kalkwasser? Well, the first one is that it's dirt cheap, it's probably the most cost-effective way of maintaining your calcium and alkalinity levels. You can get 25 kilograms of this stuff for as little as £45, which would amount to a lifetime supply for a lot of people. It also has another benefit of precipitating out some of your phosphate levels. So on paper, this stuff seems like the ideal uh, supplement. So if that's the case, why isn't it more popular? Hardly anyone seems to use this stuff, especially in the UK. The reason is that it has a number of uh, drawbacks that make it pretty inconvenient to use compared to something like a two-part dosing system or an all-in-one like all for reef. The first major drawback is that it has to be dripped into the aquarium really, really slowly Otherwise, it will raise the pH up too high and likely cause precipitation of your calcium and potentially even harm some of your corals and fish. It's also very weak in terms of calcium and alkalinity concentration. If you have a high demand tank, you're likely going to have to dose a heck of a lot of this stuff which then causes another problem that if you dose too much of it, it's going to lower your salinity. So you're very much limited on how much you can dose by your evaporation rate. Therefore, you might have heard back in the day, a lot of people used to run Kaltwasser via their auto top-off, which again isn't an ideal situation because you can't precisely control how much calcium and alkalinity is getting dosed into your tank. I'm going to be using Kalkwasser mainly for its pH benefits. I'm currently dosing a two-part system which will make up the bulk of my calcium and alkalinity supplementation, but I will have to readjust uh, my dosing levels to take into account the small amount of Kaltwasser that will be getting dosed. I'm going to be dosing it via a motorised device called a Kaltwasser stirrer. This will allow me to drip the Kaltwasser into my sump very slowly while keeping the Kaltwasser fully saturated, but we'll get into that later in the video. First of all, let's take a look at my current pH swing. So what we're looking at here is my daily pH swing, sometimes called the 
nurnal or diurnal pH swing. So as you can see, it starts off around about 7.885 in the morning, it slowly ramps up to around about a peak of 8.23, then after the lights go out, it slowly drips back drops back down to around about 7.85 again, and this basically just happens night on night. Now what we're seeing here happens in almost all tanks to some degree. In an ideal world this would be pretty much a, a flat line. But in my case due to the amount of fish I have in my tank and the, the powerful uh, lighting I'm using it's causing quite a big daily swing. So what I'm hoping to achieve via the Kaltwasser dozing is to maybe try and level this out a bit over time so that the swing isn't quite so pronounced. So, so before we get into how I'm actually going to set up the calc stirrer, let's take a look at this useful calculator that I found online that will help me determine how much calcium and alkalinity the amount of calcwasser I'm dosing is going to add to the tank. So if I just go to Ham Zaz Reef and open up the Calc Contribution Calculator. So this is a Calc Contribution Calculator. And what the first part is actually about, well it's, it's broken up into three sections. So you've got your Calc Solution uh, part of the calculator. What the actual strength of the solution is, is the second part of the calculator. The third part is where you enter your system information. And the fourth part shows you how much actual calcium and alkalinity is being added per the volume of saturated calc wasser you're adding. Hopefully that makes sense. So for example, if I Say I want to add 2 grams of Kaltwasser to 1 litre of water at 20 degrees Celsius. Click Calculate. It shows me the solution strength is going to be 100% saturated with a calcium of 884 parts per million and an alkalinity of 124.4 dkh carbon hardness and there will be an undissolved mass of calcwasser at the bottom of the container of 0 0.37 grams. On the second part, so I've got a, a Red Sea Reefer 350 and I plan to add 15 mils of calc of Kaltwasser per hour to the tank, so if I work that out here, that will be 360 mils per day. So I'll add that in here. And the system volume, although it's 350, we'll say it's 320 to take into account rocks and sand. So if I click calculate, we can see that that's only going to be contributing 0 0.14 dkh of cal carbonate hardness to my tank which is nothing at all whereas my tank actually takes 1.4 dkh per day. Now when you're using this calculator make sure you set all the parameters to the right um, scales so Make sure you add like millimetres if you're using millimetres. If your system volumes and litres, add litres. If not, you can add US gallons, for example. But if you get this mixed up, it won't give you an accurate reading. I often get caught out by the DKH rather than the mill equivalent. So just something to watch out for. So let's just see what happens. How much, so let's see how much saturated calcwasser I would need to add to meet the full 1.4 dkh alkalinity 
consumption my tank has so so if I was to add two litres of pure saturated kaltwasser to my aquarium I would still only be adding 0 0.7 dkh per day of alkalinity in my tank which would be half of what I would need so realistically if I put in four litres we're getting 1.56 which is slightly above so I probably need about 3.8 litres of pure saturated kaltwasser yep, to meet my uh, alkalinity consumption now that is probably lower than my daily evaporation rate but I'm not sure but I would be teetering on the edge of how much I could add without severely affecting my tank salinity. As you can see that's only adding 10.5 parts per million of calcium per day. I would still have to dose additional trace elements and potentially magnesium on top of that. So that's just a wee brief overview of uh, how to work out how much kaltwasser to actually dose, but since I'm only using it for pH, it's not really going to be a concern for me. So this is the kaltwasser stirrer that I'm going to use. It's a motorised device that will come on periodically and stir the kaltwasser in order to keep it saturated. Now this isn't a pre-built kaltwasser stirrer, this is basically a marine sources motorised uh, dosing container that had a stirrer in it for stirring like your ordinary KH solution that I've actually modified and turned into a kaltwasser stirrer by adding the arrow bulkhead inlet and I drilled the side of the container to add the outlet. I did this because the only kaltwasser stirrer currently on the market is a Deltec which costs about £350 where this was a heck of a lot cheaper and basically is exactly the same thing. I'm using some uh, Seachem reef kaltwasser which is actually quite an expensive kaltwasser just simply because I got it on a Black Friday deal. So to actually add the kaltwasser to the container, what you want to do is add three or four big heat teaspoonfuls of kaltwasser. It's got an almost talcum powder like structure to it and just let this slowly dissolve into the water. Uh, I'll add the stirring give it a little stir here. So this will actually take quite a while to fully... Uh, what happens is only so much of the kaltwasser will get absorbed into the water and the rest will settle out at the bottom and that's what the stirrer stirs up every so often to keep the actual water, the actual kaltwasser fully saturated. So this is a kaltwasser after a good mix. As you can see, it's almost the consistency of skimmed milk. Now you wouldn't dose this into the tank in its current state. What you need to do is wait for a few hours for this to fully settle out and you're only going to be dosing the clear liquid that's left at the, the top of the container. So once you've added your kaltwasser powder to the reactor, 
what you want to do is leave it to settle out for a few hours so that you have a, a thick layer of the Kalkwasa powder at the bottom which you can see here which is actually called Kalkwasa slurry and what you want to do is to the aquarium is the, the clear liquid at the top this is your fully saturated lime water or Kalkwasa so before we get into the stirrer setup I'll just quickly show you a way of how to dose Kalkwasa without a stirrer what you want is some kind of sealed container like this old uh, drinks decanter I've got here now I've predetermined that I need 12 grams of Kalkwasa to make a fully saturated solution without any waste the container holds 7 litres so what you do is add the Kalkwasa then give it a good stir seal it back up and leave it for a few hours many hours later now that the Kalkwasa has had a few hours to settle what you can do is decant off the clear saturated Kalkwasa similar to what I'm doing here this is why this sort of old drinks decanter is ideal it allows you to decant off the clear liquid that's above the sort of layer of undissolved Kalkwasa at the bottom when you're doing this you want to try and avoid as many bubbles as possible don't just pour it in i'm sort of holding it at an angle to try and minimize the amount of co2 that's actually getting into the kaltwasser because that'll reduce its potency i'm going to be dosing this into the nano and i'm basically just using an old Voss bottle for this as you probably know they make excellent uh, dosing containers or dosing solution holders so as you can see here the actual saturated Kalkwasa is fairly clear this is the sort of consistency that you want to be dosing into your uh, aquarium I'm going to be dosing this into the Nano using an ordinary Jabo dosing pump just set to dose 15 mil every hour until the bottle runs out then I'll have to refill it this is a disadvantage of doing it this way whereas a stirrer could be left for a couple of weeks at a time so how am I going to actually implement this Kalkwasser stirrer onto my aquarium? So if we go to the Bolt Reef Supply website, they've got a good uh, diagram here that illustrates it fairly well. So I'm going to use this kind of setup. So what happens is you have a continuous duty dosing pump that will draw water up from your ATO reservoir push that water into the Kalkwasser stirrer which will then feed fresh water into the bottom of the vessel and this will push the clear saturated Kalkwasser out of the top uh, outlet which will then slowly drip into your tank now for me it's not an ideal situation because my Kalkwasser stirrer isn't a sealed vessel like this so therefore it can't be pressurised so therefore I can't pump water from the Kalkwasser stirrer up to my sump so I ha had to find a way to have my Kalkwasser stirrer sitting above the sump so that it will just overflow and drip out without any sort of problems and as it turns out the actual really expensive Del Deltec Kalkwasser 
is exactly a uh, cult lesser stirrer is exactly the same. So I finally managed to get this implemented onto my Red Sea Reefer 350. Now as you can see here, the cult lesser has actually cleared up quite a bit. Now what I've had to do is hook the stirrer up to my Neptune Apex, which I have programmed to switch the stirrer on for 30 seconds every 3 hours. I've also programmed the Apex to only turn the dosing pump on for 1 minute every hour, which happens at half past the hour, so as to avoid dozing anything into the aquarium at the same time as the stirrer gets stirred. Now this isn't really ideal for me, this setup, because my original plan was to have a continuous drip running 24-7 but at a really low uh, rate, so say dripping 1 mil per minute 24 hours a day, but I can't get a consistent drip out the stirrer at anything less than 15 mils per minute which is far far too high for my purposes so I've had to end up doing this sort of elaborate program where the apex only switches the stirrer on once an hour and the pump on once an hour but you have to avoid them being on at the same time bit of a pain in the bum to say the least I actually think I would have been better not drilling the motorised dosing container and turning it into a stirrer, but just rather filling it up with calc wasser and leaving a thick layer of calc wasser at the bottom and then using just a motorised dosing container to stir it every now and again and just hooking up the continuous duty dosing pump to draw from the motorised eh, dosing container and produce a very, very low drip. Obviously I would have had to fill it up more often, but I would have probably been closer to achieving what I actually wanted. So as you can see, although Calc Wasser is often touted as a simple and effective uh, dosing solution, it's actually really complicated to set one of these things up and do it properly. I mean, not everybody's got a computerised aquarium controller or are they willing to put in the time, effort and money to set something like this up? I mean the whole thing is just a bit of a faff if you ask me, especially when compared to an ordinary dosing solution. You're talking almost calcium reactor levels of complexity here and money to be quite honest with you. I honestly can't see your average reefer going to this extreme. So it's quite clear why Kaltwasser isn't a very popular dosing solution. So one final point I'd like to make here is what I've got set up I'm not going to run long term because it's actually quite dangerous. I've got it sit on, sat on a little shelf made of egg crate. Now it's fairly secure but if this was to tip over, that would be game over for my aquarium. It'd probably kill everything, even the fish. It's not going to tip over, but I'm just going to leave it like this for the short term to see how it affects my pH over a week or two, and then I'll probably look at implementing some other kind of solution. So if you've any suggestions to make this safer, I'm all ears. So that's pretty much it, guys. Calc wasser in a nutshell. I'll report back in a few weeks after a bit of fine tuning and I'll let you see how it affected my pH on the graphs. So that's it guys, I'm the Opinionated Reefer and I'll catch you next time.